Today on my YouTube channel, we are looking at the POC VPD version two knee pads. These are a set of mountain biking knee pads I've had in my kit bag for some time. So we're gonna have a brief look and review of how these have held up and if they're suitable for you. So today on my YouTube channel, we are looking at the POC VPD version two knee pad. These are a set of premium end knee pads that I've had in my kit bag for some time now, I believe a few years, and I've used them on a, a various different range of terrains and style of riding, from trail through to enduro and downhill riding. So given, I've given them a good range of testing as a premium product, I expect build quality to be of a certain standard and design to sort of warrant the sort of premium prices that some of these companies charge. And POC are, I'd say no exception to that. They're definitely not your budget end product. The build quality of these I've found very, very good. They've given me a very high level of protection through numerous crashes and numerous styles of, as I said, styles of riding and they hold up really well. Like there's no wear, there's no tear, the Velcro is still sticking strong and they just generally still holding up well. I mean, I've had a lot of riding through these. I you know, do a fair lot of riding and these are my main, have been my main go-to knee pads for a lot of that recently. Um, so I can't fault that, I cannot fault the build quality. They're designed in a way that works really well as long as you have the right size. Now, I've worn several knee pads before in the past. Some have fitted better than others. Some have moved when crashing. Some have, you know, slid round or slid down when you're riding or pedaling more. I found these haven't. I'm going to put that predominantly down to the right size for me, which is large, um, but also down to the design of them. They're a classic sort of tube design with a wide, I'd say almost a two to three inch sort of neoprene rubberized band built into the knee, uh, knee pad itself, which has got silicon gripper rails on the inside and then wide Velcro that goes around the outside. So you can almost wear them without tightening them up and they stay pretty much put. The bottom of the knee pad is the same design, but much reduced down and much more minimalist. So it's probably half inch to an inch wide, but same sort of reinforced band with the silicon gripper rails and the Velcro, which I found when, you know, when fitted and tightened up, they do not move. They do not move through, you know, pedaling, for riding, for crashing, which is the main, the main point for me. Like, you can have the world's best knee pad, but if it slides round your knee as soon as you hit the dirt, what's the point? You might as well just take your chances and just jump into the dirt anyway. So for me, I found them fit absolutely spot on, like incredibly good fit. I would say, you know, like all protection equipment and anything you wear, try it on size, check it fits before you go, you know, heading down a mountain use a manufacturer's guide size chart i went by that for mine it worked out pretty well i can't say for other sizes because i haven't worn them but do check so on, on that level i think they're brilliant they've got inside them i think what helps with the comfort and pedalability of these knee pads is they've got their pox design kneecap which is soft and flexible when you're pedaling, you're moving and bending. But if you have a hard crash or you make a hard impact, it firms up and stiffens up, thus giving you a high level of protection, but giving you that pedability and flexibility when riding on a bike, which adds to that whole comfort point, which again, I, I found very good. If I was to do a lot of pedaling, a lot of riding on trailly stuff in warmer climates, or you know, if we had some sun occasionally in England, 
I would probably err towards maybe a lighter knee pad, maybe the POC Airs, because these are, we're well, not very breathable at all. They are quite sweaty, they don't breathe very well, and you do get very hot knees. But saying that, I will take that over a reduced level of protection if I'm doing enduro races or downhill or anything gravity based. If I'm just going around Fetford or out for a long trail, trail ride, something lighter in the middle of a summer would probably be better. I have wore them underneath downhill trousers and pants before. I think I've got some all-star ones and they, they do fit under as long as you get the right size trousers. So if you are a, a winter, British winter rider or you do live up Scotland way and you like to run downhill pants, they will fit under and obviously still then give you the added protection as well as the trousers. So all in all, the only downsides I'd say is breathability or considerable lack of breathability. Durability, they are, they are spot on. I say I've had these a few years now and they still perform equally as well as the day I bought them. Yes, they're a bit dirty, they're a bit mucky, but the knee pads, they're not supposed to be pristine. You're not, you're not, you're not trying hard enough if they are. I would, I'd happily buy them again and I happily recommend them to anybody doing enduro to drown hill and a bit of trail riding. If you're into XC racing, they're not the knee pad for you. They're not gonna, they're more overkill than what you want. Any other thoughts people might have, or if you agree with me, disagree with me maybe, please leave a, a comment below, like, share this video, and I will be back again shortly with another video. Thank you.